Hey everyone, do you know how taxes work when it comes to your rental properties in Canada? Well, if you own rental properties or you're looking to buy rental properties in the near future and you want to understand how the taxation works in Canada, then you got to check out today's video. Okay, so when you buy a rental property, the only taxes you pay when you buy a rental property is the land transfer tax. And that changes like in every single city. So check out your local municipality tax rules, but um, your rule of thumbs around 1% of the total value of the property is your land transfer tax. But don't hold me on that because it changes from province to province so and city to city. So please check out the your local municipality tax rules. Okay, when it comes to collecting rental income, uh, you can, we're so lucky in Canada, you can essentially collect rental income and with all the write-offs that we have, you can essentially collect it like tax-free. Okay, so hear me out. So when you buy a rental property, you have mortgage interest, you have expenses, you have property taxes, you have bills like utility bills, all that gets written off against your rental income. And the last thing, you can also depreciate your property a certain percentage every single year. Check your account, I think it's around three to 4% every single year, but don't, like, I'm not an account, so I don't know the exact number. But all to say is that when you have rental income, there's so many write-offs that essentially you can collect it tax free and then any extra income that you collect say cash flow gets treated as ordinary income so if you make fifty thousand dollars a year and you collect ten thousand dollars of cash flow after writing off all those other expenses then you essentially made sixty thousand dollars a year and that gets treated as ordinary income like your regular job income when it comes to selling your rental property assuming you don't live in it and it's not your principal place of residence so this is like truly an investment vehicle then the only taxes you pay is your capital gains tax rate so for example if you uh, bought a house that was worth $300,000 a long time ago and then it shot up to $600,000 when you sold it, the only tax you pay is 50% of that profit. So basically $600,000 minus $300,000 is $300,000. So take 50% of that, that's $150,000 is what you get taxed on at the capital gains tax rate, which is around 25% plus or minus a few percent, depending on your marginal tax rate. But be sure to check with your accountant. But I'll just say it's really super, like it's pretty cheap. You get paid, like, you only pay like 25% plus or minus a couple of percent on capital gains for real estate. So if you're planning to transfer your rental properties to your kids in the future, Unfortunately, there's no way around it. It's like as if you sold it to another person and it gets treated like at the capital gains tax rate. The only way around it is, actually there's two ways around it. You can have a trust fund, which gets super complicated and really gets costly because there's a huge setup fee to get the trust um, income, like the trust fund set up, plus there's yearly filing fees and, and then it only applies for a certain amount of years. So please check with your account and your estate lawyer to figure that all out. But I'll just say that's a whole different complicated beast. So I'm not going to dive into that right now. But uh, the other way is you could just hold your rent of properties until you pass away and you could buy insurance like right now and help offset the taxes when you pass away so that your insurance can actually pay out the capital gains that you expect to pay in the future. Hey everyone, if you are in Ontario or Manitoba or in Alberta and you need something like an insurance product to help you offset your ta capital gains taxes when you transfer your rental property to your kids when you pass away, then be sure to check out this insurance brokerage company, which is Policy Advisor. They are a safe and secure and super transparent, super convenient platform for you to get quotes on a number of insurance products. So be sure to check out the link below offered by policyadvisor.com. So when it comes to capital losses, 
So um, you can write off 50% of those losses against your income. So for example, if you bought a rental property and you try to flip it and the flip went wrong, meaning you sold it at a loss, then you could take some of those losses and apply it to your income. Only 50% of losses can be applied to your income. If you plan to sell your rental property, I want to share two strategies for reducing your taxable income. So the first way, and this is the way I've used, is you could harvest all your RSP room, basically hoard it, basically not touch it, because you're expecting that when you sell one of your rental properties, it's gonna be like a huge windfall. So when that happens, you could get the profits from your property and dump it into your RSPs and use those RSPs to help you try, well, attempt to reduce your tax bracket, okay? Now, it might not make a huge dent, but at least it's better than nothing. So basically what I'm trying to get at is what if you sell a rental property at a huge capital gain, you hoard on, you can use your RSPs to offset your taxes. Now, the second way to reduce your taxes for your rental properties is if you're planning to, like say, take a career break or like take, basically take a year off or you're gonna have a year where you're not gonna make as much income. Like you might be taking a maternity leave or a paternity leave. So during those times, you might be at a lower income tax bracket, a tax rate than you are right now. If you uh, needed to sell a rental property, that is the year, the optimal time to sell a rental property because you're at a lower income tax bracket. Now, of course, I'm not advocating to sell your rental properties because the only way your assets are growing is really time in the market, not timing the market. Now, if you are interested in growing your real estate portfolio, please check out my website, financialnirvanamama.com, where I offer beginner's guide to investing in real estate. And if you want to take it more seriously and scale, uh, buy more and more rental properties, the right way, the fastest way, without like tons of costly mistakes, I provide a, a systematic framework and offer it through Investor Academy through Financial Nirvana Mama. So check out that link below if you are interested in really scaling your real estate portfolio. Hey everyone, I hope you found this video super helpful. It would mean the world to me if you smash that like button and hit it, hit it. So you let me know that you like this video. Anyways, I hope you have a great day and thanks for watching.